Hello there everybody, Sam's Trains here, welcome back to the railway. It's experiment time again and today I have a plan to build a monster steam locomotive. It's the supercharged Hornby Schools class, but is it going to work? Let's test this for the very first time. You may remember last year I constructed this monstrosity, I called it Speedy Pete and I also called it the world's strongest 00 gauge locomotive. However, a lot of people got in touch and said, Meh, you can't call that a locomotive, it doesn't have any wheels. Well, I disagree. Here I have the dictionary definition of a locomotive. Locomotive, a powered railway vehicle used for pulling trains. At no point are wheels mentioned, so I think Speedy Pete does constitute a locomotive, it's just a little bit unconventional. However, just in case, just in case those people were correct, I've decided that today's loco is going to look like a normal steam locomotive and it's going to run like one. And my plan is to take two regular model trains and mix them together to make one monster one. So I've bought a couple of model trains. I first bought this, you might not understand why, but this is a Hornby Railroad Schools class, Loco Drive. And then to mix with it, I have this. This is the older Hornby Railway Schools class, the same model, just tender drive. And the plan very simply is this. I'm going to use the locomotive from the Loco Drive Hornby Railroad Schools class. I'm going to make some modifications to make it stronger. Then I'm going to add the tender from the Hornby Railway's tender drive schools class so that we've got a motor in both of the units. And then, just because it's going to look cool, I'm going to add the tender from the Hornby Railroad Schools class as well, so that we have a schools class with two tenders. Now, that is something very cool. And also, that second tender is going to help with the pickups as well, because loco and tender aren't going to have very many by the time I've finished with them. So, let's get some of these unboxed. I haven't actually inspected these two models yet. I think I know how I'm going to go about this, but we need to find out for sure. So, let's get these unboxed, and we need to test them, find out how powerful they are before I start messing about with them. Okay, so let's take a look at the Hornby Railroad version first of all. Now I know some people do get annoyed when I do these experiments because they say I'm ruining good model trains, uh, but you know, you have to understand that I do this for a living, it's my business. The only reason I really buy model trains is so that I can put them into videos, and so if this video does well and people enjoy it, then the loco is not wasted. That's the way I see it. And I'm also not going to do anything in this video, look at this. Can't find rusty, piece of brass, perfect. That just shows you how dodgy this video is gonna be. Um, but yeah, I'm not gonna do anything that's gonna destroy this loco. I could, in theory, put it back to its original condition if I wanted to. Um, however, I think what I'm gonna do today is gonna be quite cool, and I might well want to keep it like that. But seeing this, it, it is almost a shame that I'm going to be, well, not destroying it, let's say buttering it, shall we? Let's say that. Right, trying to grab this as best I can. Quickly, please, Sam. All right, so you're getting an unboxing as well. There it is, Seven Oaks. this is, number 30935. And this seems to be exactly what I want. It is the Loco Drive, it's got a set of traction tires. Uh, not very heavy, but we can fix that, I think. I think I can add some more weight to this somehow. And obviously, I'm gonna be swapping out the tenders and messing about with those. First though, let's get this down onto the track and see how it pulls straight out of the box. First question then, does this actually work? It should do, because it's brand new, but let's see. Yes, it does actually very nicely too. Okay, good. Second test, let's do a little bit of a pulling power test. This is my primitive method of pulling power testing. Uh, let's find out the number of newtons this thing has of pulling tractive effort. And that is settling, I give it a little shake like this, at zero point, oh, it's rising. Jeez, it's going up. That is reaching, it's gone beyond 0 0.4, 0 0.42. 0 0.44, 0 0.46, wow, 0 0.48 I have, very good. Right, let's write that down. And while I do write that down, let's unbox the old Hornby Railways version. Okay, let's get the other one out then. Now this of course is second hand because Hornby haven't made tender driven schools class locos for quite a long time. So let's have a look at this. It's in the top link packaging, not much to see. I really want to do a review on this, but I'm not, I'm not. Okay, uh, and again, I mean, this is really interesting though actually because it's the same locomotive. It's the same model just produced a few decades before 
and with a, def a different mechanism. So here is the loco. I'm not actually going to be using this in the experiment, so I won't actually be ruining or messing about with this. So that is fine, I suppose. The bit I am going to need is this bit, which is wrapped in nice red paper for some reason, and it is the tender drive unit, and it looks to be in very, very good condition. Um, I'm going to have to service it up, I think, but straight out of the box, I have to wonder how does this perform? What sort of pulling power can we expect out of this one? So let's go and test this, see if it works at all. Of course, not being brand new, I'm not certain whether or not this one's going to work, so let's find out. Uh, something's happening, but the loco is not running. So we have a problem with this. The motor was running, but the loco wasn't. So I assume we have an issue with the driving gear. Yes, the driving gear is loose. That's a common issue. Can I just rectify this briefly? Okay, so there's a horrible amount of like polystyrene all over the mechanism and the front bogey's off, but it is working. So I should be able to do a pulling power test. God, it's not very powerful at all. It's basically zero. Why? That is very, very weak. That's going to definitely need some work doing. Speed it up a little bit. Yeah, it's got like zero points, so that's not going to be helping at all as far as traction is concerned. That's not good. Anyway, so we need to get the Hornby Railroad version again, and I'm going to start by doing my modifications to that. Right, let's have a look at this baby then, find out what I can do. So what I'm planning to do here is exactly the opposite of what I did on that traction tyre video where I replaced the wheels with rubber tyres with ones that didn't have rubber tyres to get rid of the traction tyres. Here I'm going to be replacing the rear driving wheels which don't have traction tyres fitted from the factory, replacing them with wheels that do have traction tyres so that every wheel on the Loco is driven. bit of a funny noise to it but I think for the purposes of this that is going to be fine. Next up then I need to tackle the weight and add a little bit more weight inside the body so this has got as much power as possible. Right, so that is an extra 35 grams added to the locomotive which doesn't sound like very much but it's right over the driving wheels more or less, which should actually make quite a difference. So let's take it down onto the track and find out. Okay, schools class with extra traction tires and extra weight, does it work? Yes, it does. All right. More importantly though, the question I should be asking is, how much of a difference have those modifications actually made? So let's measure this again. I'm a bit scared about what the results are gonna be. Hopefully the motor won't burn out. Oh, wow. Right, I'm not doing that for too long, but I saw 0 0.6 there, and it's actually so powerful that the motor is struggling to run. Perhaps I should run this in for a little while, yes. I'll leave this running in, I think, for the next section of the video. So I only need to worry about the tender, of course, because the loco isn't to be used in the experiment. And this, for me, should be fairly standard practice. It's going to be a full service. I might, uh, well, I, I do intend to replace the traction tyres entirely with new ones just to give them maximum grip. And I'll see what else I can do probably to just increase the power of this thing very slightly, if possible. Right, I think that is working sweet as a nut. Fully repaired, new traction tyres, nicely lubricated. Let's see what it's got. Yeah, seems all right, that. Just clean the wheels, give it some testing on the track. Well, unfortunately, folks, this one went wrong. I tested it and it was really, really struggling. Took it back onto the bench, measured the motor, and one of the coils was faulty. So I've done my retrofit with the CD motor, and oh, if I get the front bogey on, 
you can see it now works better than it ever has done before. Now I've not yet soldered the wires because I'm going to put plugs on, I'm not going to be wiring it up to this loco. Uh, so yeah, the wiring is dodgy, I've just literally fudged them in place. But as you can see, this is now a beautiful runner, much better than it ever was before. Uh, like I say, the glue's still drying, so I'm not going to be putting my uh, sort of strength test onto this. Although maybe I could just try a bit of a... Oh yeah, actually, yeah, that. Go on then, let me do a little bit of one. I've taken the back coupling off ready for when I put the two locos together. Uh, but go on, let's try it. This could undo the super glue that I've put on. Okay, I saw 0.3 newtons, so sufficient is it to say that this is now pulling much, much better. Right, so next job then is going to be to marry the loco and two tenders together. Let's give that a try. So this is actually pretty exciting now. We have the loco, we have the tender drive tender and the pickup tender all ready to be put together. I've taken the liberty of fitting plugs and sockets to each of the three so that this should be reasonably easy to do. Uh, first of all then, let's try putting together the two tenders. I've also made a drawbar uh, for the two tenders because obviously I only have one working drawbar. So yeah, let's give this a go. Okay, that looks decent. So we've got the wire going up underneath without any interference there, so that's pretty nice. And those two are screwed together. Now I need to get the wire from the loco up into the tender itself. Okay, perfect. So everything is plugged in together and the locos are now connected. I say locos because we've got a tender as well, which is, I guess, technically a loco. So let's pop the body on that. Okay, I think we have it, folks. I think we are ready. Let's try this thing. Is it actually going to work? Here it is then, the Monster Schools class, weighing in at almost 500 grams. It has eight driving wheels, two, four, six traction tires, and an entire tender dedicated to picking up power. All of that sounds very, very cool, but I haven't yet tested this. So let's give this its first ever try, shall we? Here we go, the Monster Schools class. Man, it does work. Oh, not very happy in reverse. <laughs> but in forwards, it's all right. I'm not sure why that would be. Blimey. Yeah, I don't know if the two mechanisms may be fighting each other or something, but yeah, it does seem as though it's working all right. The slow speeds are all right. Okay, big test then. Let's find out what the, what the pulling power is. The problem is, I think, that the tender is much faster than the loco, and so they're sort of fighting each other a bit. It is a shame that the tender's motor was spent, because if I could have kept the original one, uh, the two speeds would have been much, much more closely matched. However, it shouldn't affect the pulling power too much, so let's see how this goes. Let's see what we've got. Can we beat what the two locos had individually? Let's find out. Oh my god, whoa, it's off the scale. You see that? It's gone off the scale. Right, let me go and get the other scale. Okay, let's try again. We now have one to 10 Newtons on the scale. Let's try again, 50% speed. Yep, yeah, it's going up. It's hovering. Oop, the loco stopped. There we are. We're at 1.4 at the top. Wow. 1.4 Newtons. I'll go and punch that into the database and tell you how that fares against other locos. The results are in and this is the most powerful steam locomotive in my entire collection. It does beat the Garrett. 1.4 Newtons translates roughly to 75 coaches on straight and level track. And that is more than the Hatton 66, it's more than the Hornby Class 56, it is more than basically every loco I've ever measured. Only the V-Trains Class 37 is more powerful than this, and that is the only one I have. What a monster this is. Is it perfect? No. Is it going to be happy as it's running? No, because the two motors are running at different speeds. However, even despite that, it is the second most powerful loco I have ever owned now. And that is quite a bold claim, I do realize that. So let's put this to the test. So in order to find that out, I've set up one or two coaches, and by that I mean 35 of them.
This is entirely untested. I have no idea whether this is going to work. So the drama may be real, folks. It may be. All right, let's go couple. Nice and steadily does it. Here we go. Let's attempt the coupling very carefully. All right, I think we are coupled. And with that, it is time to see if this Monster Schools class can handle 35 coaches. Let's start. Oh. Well, it seems it can, but it's pulled the coaches off. Let's try that again, shall we? Start again. Well, the answer is very much yes, with ease. Look how easily it's going. There's n there isn't even any wheel slip. Look at this. Right, so at the risk of being a bit boring, I will stand here, or sit here, and watch the entire train go past. It is slowing down on Gordon's Hill, as you can see. The reason for that being that there is a lot of current going through the system here and therefore the voltage drop is quite high, but as you can see, it is not coming to a halt. <laughs> Look at this. Let's pan round. This is an absolute monster. And it's actually handling it really easily. I thought it was, I thought it'd be struggling, wheels spinning. No, it is doing it incredibly easily. Let's keep this in one shot, shall I? Let's go out. See if we can find the back of the train. There it goes, and it's there, there is the back of the train. <laughs> that is crazy. I wonder if it perhaps needs a bit more power. And now disaster strikes. Look at this. The curve did it, unfortunately. <laughs> wow. So, Loco 1 coaches nil. I think that's very much a victory for the schools class. So there you have it then, folks. That is my solution on how to supersize Hornby Locos. And look how jerky it is without a load. It actually runs much better with a load because all of those coaches were slowing the tender down a little bit and stopping it fighting the loco so much. Smooth it may not be, but it does work and it is reliable, as you could see. So I consider that quite a success. So hopefully the people that were saying my strongest locos are not actual locos. Hopefully those people will be appeased by that. And hopefully you enjoyed seeing the process. So yeah, that was an awful lot of fun. So thank you so much for watching. Let me know what you thought. Did you think this was ever going to work? Have you ever tried something like this yourself? Do let me know. For now though, thank you so much for watching. And I will see you very, very soon. Alright, cheers everybody.